here to shut the door. Here's a... Good evening, everyone. It's August 15th at 7 Central Time. Welcome to Brenda's Bisque Box and Painting Live. Tonight we're going to work on painting our woodland animals. Um, so I have the squirrel and the little birds that I already base coated, but I have a couple spots, so I'm going to touch those up yet. Um, and you may have base coated and you may have not, that's okay. You can go ahead and paint along or watch along. Hope everyone had a good week. I hope everyone got their boxes without any problems. We haven't heard any problems. If you do, just let us know. So I'm just touching up my little white spots that I had on here. And then I'm going to let it dry and then we're going to actually base coat a whole piece because we had a few new people and I want to make sure everyone knows how to base coat. So I'm just getting the little little white spots that were still on my bird. And my little squirrel has a few yet too, so you always want to make sure that you got those little spots all covered and you just want to brush out your paint so it's nice and smooth. So I'm just looking him over and touching him up. And then he'll dry while we're working on another piece. So that should be pretty good for those guys. We'll let them dry. So now tonight I don't have my raccoon because my we had a craft show Saturday and Sunday out of town and the brakes went out of my vehicle and it's at the shop. And my paint and brushes are in there along with some of the bisque. So we have to improvise tonight. Uh, so I don't have a raccoon, but I do have an extra squirrel and extra fox, so we're going to work on that. And all the pieces are actually base coated black for this box, so I can use one of them, even though we were going to work on the raccoon, I'll just use one of these to show how to base coat. So I just have a round nylon brush, um, this one is a size 9, and then I'm just, use, and, um, I'm just using a the dark holiday black acrylic stain and I just put a pile on my aluminum foil which I use because I can roll that up and throw that out so I'm just gonna look to make sure I'm in the middle of the screen here and it looks like it so I'm just gonna dab my brush into the black and kinda load it up and you can start on the front or the bottom I'm gonna start on the bottom so I have a, a nice paint in my brush and I'm just gonna put my brush on my piece and then just brush back and forth to brush it out. So you just keep going and grabbing your paint and going back and forth and brushing it out. And there's an inch inside rim always on your piece for how thick your piece is. You also want to always get that um, base coat of your black also. So again I'm just going to grab some of the black paint and brush it out nice so it's nice nice and smooth and as it dries the brush marks will um, disappear for the most part so again I'm just grabbing that black and brushing back and forth and brushing it out so it's nice and smooth and just keep going all the way around Courtney's getting my tablet set up so I can see everyone. So hello everyone. We have Anne and Lisa and Bonnie. And we have another Lisa. So welcome you guys. Is everyone painting along or is are you guys just watching and then going to um, paint later? Um, Courtney is saving the videos to the Bisque Box group. Um, it's going to take a little while because they... It takes a long time for them to download, and if you were watching any of the posts today, you would have seen that. So again, I'm just um, showing you how to base coat, because we do have quite a few newbies. And I'm just grabbing some of the acrylic black. And here the fur was going this way, so I'm just going with, with the direction of it. And this is the fox instead of the raccoon, because the raccoon is in my broke-down vehicle. And then the tail... The direction of the tail is going this way, so I'm just going to brush that way, the direction of the tail, also the texture, and then that just gives that a nice coat. And you just want to base coat your whole piece. And it's good to do that 
um, probably at least an hour before you're going to dry brush it so it, the dry brush colors just go on a lot nicer if your paint is good and dry. Um, a lot of times I'll do a whole batch of things in black and then I'll on one day and then maybe the next day is when I'll go and um, actually do all the dry brushing on them because I do several pieces at a time usually for my craft shows or orders. It all depends what I'm working on. So I'm getting a nice black coat down into into all the texture. I'm, and I'm going to reach over now because my comments went away and see what I can um, see here. So we have um, Jerry's watching, Debbie, Michelle, Paula. Oh, and the Bonnie's painting long for the first time. Great, that's good. You'll have to let us know what you think, if I'm going too fast or too slow. So we're just going to base coat him out. And while we're doing this, what I touched up on the squirrels and the um, birds are drying. So I'm just, you just keep going, covering everything, brushing it out so you don't have any piles or ridges of paint anywhere. And my tablet lost its comments again. And we got Carol joined us. Hi, Carol. What did you guys think of the best boxes? Did you like them? Were you surprised? have any suggestions for them. So I'm getting a little low on the black so I'm going to grab a little more black. And I just I have a big eight ounce bottle of the black because I use quite a bit of it. So we're just brushing this out. And then I'll switch now and put my fingers up in the bottom to hold it. Now I see I have some white here, so I'm going to touch that up long as I'm down there. And I'll just keep brushing the black to get a nice base, nice smooth base coat on here. So I'm working on pouring the next box, which I'm about two-thirds of the way there. And I'll be cleaning them and firing them this weekend and then pouring some more next weekend and cleaning and firing. And then Labor Day weekend we'll, we will be working on packaging everything and then boxing everything up so they can ship on the 5th. Box will be a lot of fun. Oh, how did you guys like your free brushes that were in your boxes this time? Um, next time you will have a, a eight flat will be your extra brush and then a three three round dry brush. I've found that that zero round comes in pretty handy for little things like our little birds that we're going to work on tonight and the squirrels. So I'm just brushing out my paint to make sure I don't have no puddles or ridges or white spots. So that, that's how you base coat, and, and you can base coat in different colors. Black is a very popular color. Um, this fox and the owl could have been in, done in a very dark brown, like a chocolate fudge or a walnut. But then that would have been another color to add to the box. So I just went with the black to keep the amount of colors down as much as possible. Um, so there, he's all base coated. He's, Every once in a while you see a little white spot pop up when you're done as it's drying. So I'm going to set him aside and let him dry. And scroll our comments up. Oh, we get all kinds of watchers tonight. Oh, Paula loved the boxes. Oh, great. Good to hear. And Deb Delta wants to know when we're doing Halloween. Actually, Halloween is next month. We'll start that in September. And Courtney already um, noted that, the way it looks. Oh, and Debbie's waiting for her first box. Great. 
I hope you like it because it's been a lot of fun working on them. So now I'm just washing my brush out in some water and I just use like a cottage cheese container or sour cream container. So now our little um, birds and squirrels are all base coated good and they're, well, no they're not. Here we got a little black spot so we still want to touch that up. So we'll get that touched up. And let's see here. Got a little bit on the bottom here. We'll let get that a little more. So the brushes will be the extras in next box along with some glitter. And then a couple other little things that we don't want to spoil the surprise. So we're not going to tell you all those. But they're really cute painted up. Um, And I washed my brush out again. So I think we will start with our little squirrel. And I had planned on doing the raccoon, but since I don't have him, I can't paint him. And I don't have any extras because we had to ship out a couple extra boxes today. Um, so I'm going to use my Royal and Langnickel round dry brush size 5. And then I'm going to use the, let's see, for the colors we have the Doc Holliday, was it Doc Holliday or Duncan, Courtney? Duncan. It's Duncan, the charcoal, which is your dark gray. And you just want to shake up your bottle a little bit because you could have some of the oil on top. And then I just put a little, um, little bit on my foil, maybe about a half of a dime's worth. So I have the dark, dark gray, and then I'm, I'm going to try to make sure you guys can see. Looks like I need to move things a little over further here, so you can see the paint on the foil. That should help, I think. If it's not, we'll adjust it again. There's a delay on the on the um, filming, so I can't see it actually live when I'm moving it I have to wait for it to catch up. So I have the the um, Duncan charcoal which is the dark gray about a half a dime size pile on my um, foil and I took my Royal and Lang Nickel size 5 round brush and that, that's just like a nice medium sized brush you don't need a real big one for this little squirrel and then I just put my brush in and grabbed a little bit and I'm working it in there a little bit and now I'm going to brush it out on my I'm using paper towel you could also use um, paper bags some people use coffee filters some people use a piece of t-shirt but you can see now as I'm brushing it there's no gray coming out and I don't have our finished squirrels pieces to show you either because they're also in the van but um, we'll have the van this weekend because they got it fixed we just have to go get it and it's an um, hour and a half away, one way, so. Okay, so it looks like the paint is in the picture now and I've got my brush loaded. And I'm going to, I want to give my whole squirrel a nice coating of that um, charcoal dark gray. And I'm going to start on the back because I just want to make sure there's not too much um, paint in my brush. And I'm also going to do the little bottom base that he's on. So I'm just going to brush back and forth across the texture of the squirrel's fur and when I feel like there's nothing more coming out of the brush I'm going to go to my paint I'm going to take my brush and just swipe the tip of it along the edge of my pile and then go back and forth on on like an empty spot of the foil and then brush it out because I don't want a lot of paint in the brush and that's why I guess it's called dry brushing because really your brush is dry and there's not a lot of paint in there but you can see that it's already built up that nice dark gray over the black and we want a lot of that black to be gone because we just want those shadows of that black and we're also going to do this bottom piece and, and I always do my bottoms you'll always hear me talking about make sure you do your bottoms so they look nice and finished as well so now I'm going to come back to my Foil, and I'm just going to take my tip of my brush and I'm going to go slow so you can see I'm just going right along the edge and getting just a little bit of paint 
and then I'm going to brush back and forth on there and that'll work it up into the rest of the bristles. Brush it out a little, come back to my squirrel and just gently brush back and forth because I'm going across um, fur texture. Usually when there's less texture or no texture it's smooth I'm doing more of that C, half C stroke or half of a circle stroke. So we just keep brushing it back and forth until we build up. So again I'm going back to that paint grabbing just that little bit along the edge brushing back and forth working it in brush it out on the paper come back to my piece and just keep building it up so let's see what do we got oh Sue says hi Sue so you're canning oh that's fun too I haven't had time for a garden in quite a few years, but I do need to make some salsa and relish one of these days, or years I should say. So again I just grab some of that dark gray and I'm going back and forth, just back and forth. So I'm sorry we didn't have this, the raccoon for tonight, but I never thought of it when the band broke down and actually the brakes went out on it. The two front lines broke. So it was a little hectic and frustrating. So I'm just keeping going with my dark gray. Just keep going all around and building it up. And you can see compared to the black, he's already a little he's a little little bit lighter than the birds. So again, grab that little bit, brush it out, and we'll just keep building up our dark gray. So I do have a, once we get the bird and the squirrel done, I have a couple show and tell things to kind of make up for not painting the squirrel or the, uh, the raccoon tonight, but we'll paint him next week, that's okay. Show and tell is always good too, because I have people asking about things and I can show you guys a few things. We're just going to keep going back and forth, working our way all around. These little um, squirrels and birds were quite the pain in my side to get them poured because they're actually not a standing piece. And when I spoke to Clay Magic, they said that they um, put them on a piece of clay. So instead of a piece of clay, I have a button mold, and I poured the buttons, and then I attached each one to the button, and they didn't want to stay attached, but I have it figured out now. And so they're a little better to pour than what they originally were. And we've still had orders for the BIS box um, for the animals. We're, um, I have about 10 more sets that I'm working on that would be available after Monday to ship out if anyone is still interested in purchasing the woodland animals. So again, I'm just brushing up this light, or the dark gray, I'm sorry, the dark gray to get that whole squirrel fairly covered with the dark gray and just a little bit of black shadow. And I'm going across the texture, turning my brush depending upon, because like on this face now it's going this way, but on his cheeks it's going a little further the other way. So you do have to change your brush stroke to keep going across that texture. So we'll just keep building it up, keep going all the way around. And he wouldn't have to be a gray squirrel if you wanted a red squirrel. You could make him more of a red squirrel, squirrel by using, um, you could probably use the rust that's in the box. And what, what else could you use then for some more color? Maybe add a little bit of the white to the rust to get your next shade of color. Or actually you'll, you'll have the, um, you could use the curry 
and the saddle brown and the butterscotch if you wanted to do more of a red squirrel. So you wouldn't have to do a gray squirrel if you didn't want to. And if you wanted a black squirrel, you could just leave him black and um, give him some eyes and maybe a little bit of gray highlighting just on a few, few spots and you could have yourself a black squirrel. So you don't have to paint them the way I painted them. If you don't want to, you can do whatever you'd like. So I'm just going to keep, keep going and building this up. So I do have an order um, for the woodland animals for a baby shower. And the bedding for the baby shower is all of the animals are painted in more of a grays, right, Courtney? Yeah, they're, gray. They're in the gray tones, tone, so actually all the animals, including the owl and the fox, are going to be more in the grays and gray tones when, once it's painted. I'll have to take a picture and post it for you guys to see what it looks like. Uh, I'm just going by the picture of the bedding, the baby bedding, um, and everything's just more of a, a more grays real light grays and that's how all the little animals will be painted with all the little um, all just in the gray tones I think there's a little bit of tan on a couple of them but it's mostly shades of gray so you can change things up however you want so you can see he's slowly getting um, covered in gray here and I've kind of forgot the bottom so we want to get some of the bottom I kind of wish um, Clay Magic had a bear to go with these little woodland animals because I think that would be a really nice addition. Um, tomorrow is a fun day for us because we have the Wisconsin Ceramic Show. So my daughter Courtney and I are going to the Waukesha. It's about two and a half hours south of us. Um, we're getting molds for the bis boxes, which will be a lot of fun. We're getting more paint. We'll try to go live on our and we're getting brushes for the bis boxes and Courtney just said that she's going to try to go live at the show to show you guys what a ceramic show looks like in case you've never been to one. They've changed um, drastically over the years. I probably haven't been to one in about 15 years and it was in a huge, bu huge building at the state fairgrounds and now it's moved to a smaller building because there's less so many less mold companies and vendors but it still should be a lot of fun and I can't wait to see the new molds that we ordered so we have some scarecrows we have what else do we have Courtney we have a whole bunch um, scarecrows we have a angel ornament that's about um, I think it's like five and a half inches or four inches but it's like a angel that could be a memory angel for on, on the Christmas tree and that'll probably be on our Brenda's Brushstrokes and Bisque.com page after I get get them poured. But usually the molds, when you get a mold, they um, when you order them, the company has to make them. So when you get them, the plaster is wet, and you have to let them sit usually two weeks um, to get let the plaster dry out before you can even pour the molds. Um, so we'll have to wait a little bit. Oh, we're getting the Harvest Pumpkin, which is the first video, set of four videos that I did. Um, and that's on the page that you can go and look. But we will be having that bisque for sale as soon as that mold gets dry and I can get it poured and cleaned and fired. So if anyone wants that, you can let us know. Otherwise, Courtney will be, um, once it is poured and fired and available, Courtney will be posting it on the dot com store so that should be fun to look forward to um, what else there's there was quite a few oh um my niece is getting a chameleon mold for the 4-h kids it's a little um it's the gangbuster ziggy i believe we thought the kids would like doing a chameleon Oh, what else? Oh, we got a Christmas tree mold that's going to be in our Christmas box. Oh, oh, Courtney says she was keeping that under wraps. Well, now you guys know the secret. I won't say what else is in that box, but um, the Christmas box, November, right, will have a Christmas tree in it. Yeah, the Christmas box. So I, I won't tell you what else is in it because I don't want to ruin everything. 
but I think you guys are really going to like that box. Um, we didn't get any snowmen, I don't think, because we have snowmen. Um, I got a large bundle up penguin. Um, it's like 15 or 16 inches, and those um, people like their names cut out in those. Or you can just cut out welcome, um, let it snow, stuff like that, little winter things. That's a really popular mold. So I did get that. Oh, I can't think of what else we got. I know there's, there's about eight of them. So he's just dry brushing away here while we're talking. Keep you guys interested. But I'm just going back and forth and slowly building up that dark gray. And you can see there's, I'll compare now the black bird. You can see there's a lot more gray on the squirrel than on the birds. But I'm going to get a little bit more on him yet. Um, so we have a question with brush. I'm using the Royal and Langnickel size 5 um, bristle brush. And the brush number is actually 355. Um, these are not the most expensive brushes. They're just a nice um, mid-range brush, brush price. They last really well. I have some that are 15, 16 years old. Um, you just want to make sure you clean them out well when you're done painting. And if anyone got the first box, you you got the extra product was the brush scrubbing pad. And you just put that in the sink and run water and then you brush your brushes across that and it really cleans out all that paint out of your brushes that's up in the bristles. And then let your brushes dry horizontally on say an old washcloth or an old t-shirt so that the water doesn't get up in your your ferrule up here and get the glue loose. And then once they're dry you can put them vertical in a, in a cup or a brush holder whatever it is you have. So I'm just going to get this guy a little bit lighter yet with that dark gray. So he's looking pretty good. I want some black to show, but not all of it because the black is like the undercoat, the, sh the shadows. We're just going to get a little bit more on here. So he, he paints up fairly quick. Get a little more on the bottom because you want that bottom to look finished too. And then I'm getting in underneath that front foot that's up in the air because you want gray under there too. So he's looking pretty good and you can see now compared to the birds that are all black yet that he's got a nice um, dark gray color on him. So let's see what else. Do we have any questions going on? Okay, so now I'm going to switch to my medium colored gray, which is the Duncan Ash. And you just want to shake up your color a little bit. Um, you don't need a whole lot. A good big size drop will work. Oh, I got oil in there yet, so I gotta shake it up some more. And it doesn't want to come out. Oh, now I have a whole glob of it. Okay, so now I have my Duncan charcoal. Nope, I have the ash, sorry. The charcoal was the dark color. I'm going to switch to a new piece of um, paper towel. So this needs a little mixing up, and I'm just going to use the end of my brush. You don't want a lot of, you don't want the oil separated from your paint. If it is like that, um, you want to mix it up. Okay, so I'm going to just use my same brush, and again I'm just going to come along the edge of my medium gray, grab a little bit and work it into my brush, brush it out, 
scrub a little more and brush it out. I just want to get it up in there kind of good. So now what we want to do is to leave these, the deeper crevices. I'm looking for a pointer here. I need my little pointy brush that I use my eyes for. Like down in these crevices, you want to let them darker wherever like things are overlapping each other. That's going to be darker. So we want to let that darker. We don't want to work this um, medium gray into, into that. We just want to come back to to do like say say we just say the black was a hundred percent and now the dark gray was seventy five percent and now we're gonna do the medium gray with about fifty percent coverage. I guess that would be the best way to explain it. So I'm just gonna start real light and just brush that medium gray on there. Grab some and brush it out. And I'm just going real light just to build up like the next layer of color. I want to leave some of that dark gray showing. Like you want to leave like 25% of your dark gray showing. And it's such a close color it may be hard for you guys to see the, the real difference. But once I get to the lighter color you'll be able to see it. So I'm going more... I'm going about an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch away from the darkest, like that's real dark in there where the tail and the body meets and I want to I want to let that the dark and then I want to have about a quarter inch of the dark gray and then through here is where I, I want my medium gray and then when we come back we'll do the, we'll come back another 25 percent and do my light gray to just highlight it a little bit. I'm just going to brush back and forth. Same with this head, you want to leave you want to leave that where the head and the body meets. You want that real dark, and then you want about a quarter of an inch of your medium or your dark gray, and then we're going to come with our medium gray. Same with the tail. So I'm trying to explain exactly what I'm doing and why, because that way when you guys are working by yourself, you, you have more of an idea of what to do. We're just going to gently, and I'm just going real softly, so I'm going to go on top of his foot here. And again, when we come around to the front, we want to leave where, where this front leg is meeting the belly. You want to let, let that darkness in there, and then the dark gray, and then we just want to get it with the medium gray. And then come up and get his face and his ears. Check the comments. We're just going to keep gra grabbing some of the medium gray and brushing it on here. Brush it on his front. Get under his chin and his face and his ears, around the back of his head, the top of his tail. Grab a little more, and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to get the bottom, the little button that he's sitting on to, and just get a little bit, oh, about, I'm going about 75%, and I'm letting like a quarter so that that's darker and it'll come out to lighter, because it would be darker underneath him where he's sitting because of his shadows. Just working my way around him. And we'll come back up to his body. Because that probably dried a little bit while we were doing the other part. Grab a little and work it out. And I'm going to just do a little bit across the bottom just to get another extra color on there. Grab a little and brush it out. Keep brushing back and forth. Grab a little and brush it out, and I have enough paint there for about six squirrels. Keep 
working my way all the way around him. Okay, so that's probably about all I'll do for the medium gray. Let's see if we got any questions. Looks like Courtney's keeping up with everybody. Now I'm going to grab the uh, um, gray, which is the light gray. So it's just the regular light gray. And it won't take a whole lot of that either. So I have my light gray right here. And I'm just going to swipe past my pile. And I still have, I'm still using the same brush. You'll see I usually use the same brush over and over unless I'm really switching colors to a completely different color. Like if I was going to red or an orange, I would actually change the brush out. But I'm since I'm in the gray family, I'm just going to keep using the same brush. Grab that little, that light gray, which is just labeled gray, Duncan gray, brushing it out, just working it up in there a little bit. So now I'm, um, when you look at a squirrel, a lot of times their bellies are a lot lighter. The back of his tail is lighter. So we're going to have more of the light, the gray on this area of his tail, more on his belly, a um, little bit under his chin and around his face, and then just a little bit on the rest of him, just as a highlight. So we'll start with his belly because we want more there. We want a, a lot of that area covered. And I'm, and I'm not doing the top of his arms because those would still be like that darker gray, but the bellies are usually lighter. So I grabbed a little bit of the light gray, the gray it is, but I, it's the lightest gray of the grays we're using. So now I'm going to try to get in the area above his um, paws, kind of under his chin, and get that a little lighter. And then I'm going to just come and sweep around his face a little bit just to lighten that up. And it doesn't take very much once you get to this color. I'm just getting that belly nice and light and under his chin and kind of just around his cheeks and his forehead, you could say. Now we're going to grab a little more, brush it out, and go to the back of his tail, and go back and forth, because usually the, the bottom of their tail is lighter than the top of their tail. And we'll just brush back and forth and lighten that up. Grab a little white, or light the gray, and brush it out. And I'm just going to bring it, oh, maybe like a quarter inch over so you can just see it if he's, if you're looking from this, the front or the back. Just so you see a little bit of that light color so you have that graduation. Because if you're looking from the side, you'll see more, but you want to see a little bit of it, bit of it from the side too. So we'll just keep building that up, give him nice white fluffy tail underneath there and we'll get a little bit on the tip of it here grab a little more and brush it out i think i want a little more and you can do as little or less as you want it's really up to you well, you can bring up squirrel pictures on the internet for reference if you need to look at what those darn squirrels look like or if they're running around in your yard, I guess you could look out there. I'm going to get this a little bit lighter yet. And then I'm going to brush across the rep this, but I'm only going very lightly. I just want a little bit of light, that light gray on there, not a whole lot. Same with here, his head, just to get that little extra light on him. And I'll probably I'll put a little more through here, but not a whole lot more. Because I want his face to be a lot lighter. And we'll get a, just a little bit on his hind legs and his front legs, but not a whole lot. We want more on the belly than on there. We got a little bit on the tips of those ears. So now I'm just going to look at him and 
it looks like there's a real dark area right here so I'm going to brush that. So you want to look at your piece always from different angles to make sure the color is nice and even. So he's looking, I'm going to get just a little bit on the edge of my button on the bottom. And that's actually going to be covered up with the Spanish moss, but you still want it to be finished looking. And just a little across the bottom. So I actually have more, there's more gray in the center, and as I get away from his face, his nose, it's it gradually gets lighter. So it's a gradual um, decrease in color, so it's not an abrupt change of color. It looks like it's just all blending together. Okay, so he looks pretty good. And I'm going to get just a little bit of white. So I have just a little bit of white, and I'm just going to touch the edge of that, and brush it out, get a little more and brush it out. And I want to put just like one little swipe or two on, on the tip of his ears, because the sun would be hitting that. Grab a little more here. Maybe get a little bit of white under his chin, just a little bit. And a little more on his belly here, just like right in the middle. A little more up there on those ears. And just like a little bit right through the middle here. Just to lighten it up just a little bit more as another shade. A little more on that tip there. Maybe just a little on his cheeks. And a little tad on the forehead and nose. Okay, so he's looking pretty good. So now we have his eyes, and we're going to need to come back and fill that in with the black. Check our little messages. It looks like Courtney's coming coming through really well, taking care of everybody's questions. So I'm just grabbing the black and I have a little liner brush. Um, this is the Royal Majestic 5 um, liner. It's number 4595. And we'll be getting more of these tomorrow, I believe. So they um, Carter will be adding that stuff to the website as we get stuff. If they're not in the order from yesterday um, or for tomorrow, we'll, we will be ordering ordering them. I don't remember exactly what the order was anymore. So I'm just grab, taking my liner and I'm dragging it through that black and I'm turning it about a quarter turn clockwise and then I'm pulling that liner to it um, towards me and that gives you a nice tip point at the end of your brush. And so now we want to and I'm holding my brush as though I was holding a paintbrush, so it's just between my two fingers and I'm holding down towards the bottom so I have good control of, of the brush. I have my hand on the table and I'm holding my squirrel in my hand so it's resting and it's nice and solid. And you may need to turn him at the right angle so that you can um, color in his eye. So I'm going to color in that eye. Get it nice and black again. And I'm going to get a little more paint. And I'm just using the, the black that we used to base coat. So now I have to grab some more black and turn him. But he's always resting in my hand and my hand's resting on the table. And I'm also putting my last these last two fingers on him so that my painting hand is nice and um, sturdy also. That's how you get nice, straight, controlled lines. So now we've got he's got just a nice little black eye. We're going to grab through there again, turn him so I can get the other eye. And you, and you have to move, move your finger around. Like if it doesn't fit over here, put it over here. So now it's right on that tail. 
And when I'm starting, I'm starting like at 11 o'clock, not at right at the center at 12 o'clock, because if you didn't line it up right, that would draw your eye right to that. We're just going to fill it in, and I'm going to turn it, because it looks like I need to get a little bit more on the back side there. We just want a nice round black eye. And then I think we'll give him a little black nose. And actually, I don't know if they have a black nose or not. I probably should have looked. But I'm going to give him a little black nose today. And I'm just going out to where the indent is that was in the mold that outlines his nose. Well, there he's got a nice little nose now. I'm going to wash out my brush. And then I have, I just have another, um, it's just another liner brush I have. But some of the brushes will have a slant, slanted edge on them, um, which is nice for mixing up paint. Um, some of them have like a fat end, but I, I like this particular brush. And it's just, it's just a brush, it's just a liner brush. It has a really nice point on it, you can see. So I like to dip that in my white. And then I'm going to come to his eye. And when you're doing the eye, you want your highlights uh, either on the left side of both eyes or on the right side of both eyes. If you put one on the left and one on the right, he's going to look cross-eyed. Um, so I'm going to put this one up here on this right side. And I'm just going to touch the tip of that brush and get a little a little highlight. So now I'm going to turn him and I'm also going to do that same highlight and it's on the right side of this eye. So now the one, this one looks a little bigger than that one so we have to go back and make the other one a little bigger so they're kind of the same size. So there we have our little squirrel. And he's looking pretty good. So we'll let him dry. And I'm going to clean the end of that brush off. And we will switch to our little birds. So I made them little cardinals. You could make them little, bir little birds or finches or whatever you wanted to. Chickadees. Um, but I'm going to make them into little cardinals. So for the little cardinals, we're going to use the... Doc Holiday Rust. And I'm just going to shake that up a little bit and put a little drop down. I'm going to take quite a bit of the rust. And let's see, I'll see if we can start with the same brush here because it is a darker color. And flip my paper towel around and brush it out. Um, if you don't have rust, you could use um, terracotta. The last time we ordered paint, um, they didn't have the rust for Doc Holiday. I had to get terracotta. And, and it's just a shade different. It's not that big of a deal. So you kind of want a rust, a pumpkin color. And I always use that under my reds. You'll always see that, the reds and the orange, I'm always using the rust or the terracotta. So we're just going to base or dry brush our whole um, bird, the whole thing. Um, I'll probably skip doing the bottom because I don't want that red too. So I just have the rust in my brush and I'm just going to back and forth and slowly build up the, the rust so there's not a whole lot of black left. And we'll come back and put in the black for the cardinal part, but we'll use a little brush to do that. And it's easier to bring that black back in than to try to save it as you're dry brushing the whole bird. I'm grabbing the little bit of the rust. And these guys are a little bit smoother, so you can use that um, C stroke or the half circle stroke to, to get that dry brushed in there to build it up. Um, how to do the half circle? Yeah, you know how to do it. 
Okay. So according to saying I have a lot of new people watching tonight, I should show you guys more how to do the um, half circle. So I just grabbed my little bit of that rust, brushed it out, and you're just, um, so these guys are really smooth, and when it's really smooth versus the texture, the texture you want to go across, across your texture. If you have a really smooth surface like these uh, little birds, I usually do a, like a half circle or a C. I'm just brushing like that on there, and you just keep brushing it and brushing it and brushing it, and it just slowly builds up that color. And, and you could go back and forth, too. It just seems like this, this half circle like this, it builds up faster. And you can go from top to bottom or bottom to top. It doesn't matter. So again, I'm grabbing a little bit of rust, brushing it out. And when, when I get to where there is texture, like in, in this um, the crease, I want to go across. I do still want to go across that. And, and you can do that with this... Um, circle, half circle, or the C stroke. So I'm just going to keep building that up because we want them very, very rust. We don't want a lot of black showing through. But that rust or terracotta will give your orange, oranges and your reds. It just brings the, the color out of them a lot quicker than if you just, if I did just red on here, it would take a ton of coats to get the red to be red. I'm just going to grab a little bit. Here's that C stroke again on the top where they're kind of just flat and bald. Grab some of the rust and brush it out. Just keep going with that C stroke. And, and as you, you're doing it more, you, you get quicker at it. Like I'm pretty quick at it, but I'm trying to try to go slow so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Grab that rust, and you, you just keep working from one, one side to the next so that the previous side can dry. So we just want to keep building that up. Grab some rust and brush it out. And I want, I want to get on their bottoms also. So you, you have to turn it every which angle that you need to. Grab a little rust and brush it out. So we're hoping at the show tomorrow that the suppliers have more of the sealers available because they haven't really been available. They have the... Um, matte available which is actually the previous porcelain but we haven't been able to get the satin or the gloss yet so we're hoping they have it at the show so we can bring some with us to put on our web page so so now i'm actually putting them on the table and it's easier to kind of dry brush them that way grab that rust and brush it out and just keep building it up. Grab that rust and brush it out. It probably worked out good that we didn't have the squirrel or the raccoon tonight because we'll finish these guys. And then next weekend we can do the raccoon and then we'll have the fox and the owl left. So that'll give us um, four weeks of painting and then it'll be time for the new the new box. So I'm just going to keep building up this rust. Grab some rust and brush it out. And and you don't I, I don't want to get that entire crack or the line filled in where his cheeks meet his body because you do want some black in there the same with where his wings meet his belly. You want some black left in there because that's your shadowing that gives you depth depth to your piece. I'm just grabbing the rust, brushing it out. Just keep turning him. And keep building it up. Grab some rust and brush it out. And 
you and you want to get in between his heads here so that you have color in there too. So for our craft show this last weekend, we stayed in the hotel instead of in a tent, which was pretty darn nice. I think Courtney probably really thinks it was nice. Air conditioning and running water. She says air conditioning and running water and a bed. No air mattress. No air mattress. Air conditioning. <laughs> so we stayed in Kiwani, which is about 10 miles from where the craft show actually was, but it was... Um, better than driving all the way home morning and night. And it's right on Lake Michigan, so that was nice. So I'm just building up this rust. I don't want a whole lot of black showing through because we want cardinals and they're red. We just want the black where, wherever there's the depth in there, where the body parts are meeting. It's always supposed to be cooler down there because on, on the lake shore, but we've never had that luck. It's always been really warm, although it wasn't as warm this year as it's been previous years, but it was plenty warm. And we're actually um, not going back to that show because it's been getting slower and slower there for us. Our next show is in um, Greenville, Wisconsin, which is an hour away. And I think we're just going to try to take twice as much stuff to that show, and it's a one-day show instead of doing the whole three days and traveling, and see how that goes. I'm just building up this rust and getting them nice and rusty looking. And I'm not doing the bottom, I'm just letting that black. I want to get in the little crease here. So they're actually looking pretty good. Maybe just a little bit more. Sometimes the little little pieces take more work and time than the bigger pieces. I was working on those little truck ornaments and those are some putsy things and you get have to be so careful because you get one color done and you start on the next and you got your fingers in the wet paint and you got wet paint on the wrong place and so that was a little heavy on the rust there and I got to try to work that out now and I'm just brushing it out away from it but you can see there's a lot more rust there than there is here so now I need to match this other one up to that one Cardinals are always good, good sellers at shows. People always like cardinals. Oh, we'll get some more rust on the other guy. Yeah, I think a little more on their bellies. And I'm still doing that half circle or a C stroke. I'm just doing it back from the bottom up instead of the top down. It doesn't matter which way you do it. And you could also brush back and forth. That works too. Grabbing a little rust and brushing it out. And just keep turning them and working around because then it dries where you were. Okay. I think we can add our red now. And get a little more on their face. Okay, so that's good. So now I'm going to use our Duncan Real Red. Uh, Courtney says Debbie has a question. I got to bring up my thing. She says, "Why is my rust lifting back off? Um, it's probably too wet." Maybe you have to let your piece dry a little bit. 
Hopefully that's all it is. That's all I can think that it would be is it's too wet. Um, so just let it, maybe let it sit for a minute and let, let your paint actually dry. And then start. So so usually I, I'll start on one side and work just work keep working my way around, around and around, so that by, by the time I get back here, this is dry. And then I just kind of keep going. I don't, like, do it all in one spot to get it the color I want and then go to this spot and get it all the color I want. I kind of do them a layer at a time. I start at one end and just work all the way around so that this can dry while I'm over here. So maybe that'll help. So now I have the Duncan Real Red, and I'm just going to use the same brush, grab a little bit, brush it out, work it in there. That way there's not a drastic change in the colors when you're um, adding them. So now he's he's fairly dry because I've kind of put the paint out and we've been talking. So now I'm just going to start here and work my way around. And again, I'm just doing those C strokes. Maybe you're not, um, maybe try brushing out your paint on your paper towel a little more too, Debbie, so your brush is nice and dry. Because you're not putting a lot of color on at one time, like painting. You're actually just dry brushing a dry, dryish paint on. Just grab a little red and brush it out. You're welcome. I hope that works. That's all I can think is is that it's it's too wet. We're just gonna keep going around. Just keep turning them. Grab a little red and brush it out. Grab a little red and brush it out. So now, now I'm over here, but this area where I started is drying. So I let I let that dry. Even though it doesn't have all the paint that it needs, I'm going to keep adding to it. I just keep working around and around. So the red, the red goes on... Pretty quick if you use the rust um, as your undercoat. If, if you would have started with just red, it would have took a lot, lots and lots of coats of it. So I'm getting down in there just a little bit, but I'm letting some of the black in there. Grabbing the red and brushing it out. Um, so you can see when I brush on on the paper towel, there's really not, it's not coming out. Like you, you don't want a lot of paint like that. You don't want a ton of paint like that. You're just grabbing the edge of it and you're brushing it out. So there's just a little bit of paint left in your brush. And then you come to your piece and you just do like the circles or the the half circles or the C's or you can drop go back and forth too it's up to you whatever works for you but you can see there's a big difference in this little bit of paint compared to all of that paint I'm just brushing it out so now we've actually worked our way back around where I started, but we're going to go around again because we want we want that more redder than what it is. And we want to get some on the top and down in the middle here. And I'm just going to keep just make another circle back around because this will be drying as we're going back around the back. The front will be drying as drying as we're going around the back. You can see that this is a little bit darker than this. It, it takes um, lots of thin layers to get the dry brushing to work. So the, the thinner the layer, the better. So 
I'll just keep going. Let's see if we got any questions. Oh, Debbie says it's working. Good. I'm glad to hear that. So, yep, you, you want very thin layers as, as you're going around. You don't want a lot of heavy paint at one time. Just grabbing a little bit. You want to get down in between their two heads and on top of his head. And, and you can see that the black is staying in the area where the head and the body meet and where the wings overlap each other and even around the eyes and under the chins. So that's what you want because that's given your piece dimension. Just keep building this up a little more, maybe one more time around. You guys, if you guys want, you can um, go ahead and post your pictures as you paint your paint your pieces. Show us what you got, if it worked or if it didn't work. Because maybe I can um, message you or put a post that oh, well, you could do this and that would help or stuff like that. So I'm gonna just go around one more time. He's getting nice and red, but I'm just doing a little bit of a paint at a time. So I'm just grabbing the, just the edge and brushing it out. It's just little thin layers. And you could have one a shade different, darker or lighter than the other one if you don't want them exactly the same too. That was a little heavy, so I gotta brush that out. Just, I'm just brushing it down onto the rest of it. And I think we gotta go just one more, just across the back, and then I think we're back to the beginning here. And I think they look pretty good. And then I always look at them from different angles to make sure they're all nice and even. A little more on that wing. Maybe a little more in there. Kind of where they meet, but but a little bit of black in there. Okay, so there we go. We got some red birds. There you go. So let's see what we're going to do. Now we got to get some black on him. And where did I put my zero brushes? Okay, I'm actually going to use the zero brush like you guys got in your um, box. It's just the Royal and Langnickel size zero dry brush. And I'm going to go into the black. Just get a little bit of black on my brush. Switch out my paper here, brush this out because we don't want too much, and I'm going to touch up my button where the red got and the rust got onto the button and make that black and just bringing it right up to the bird, just so it, it looks like it wasn't messy on there, so it just it's black, it looks like that's how it was supposed to be and not just what all the red there's just a faint shade of red on there, but I don't want that. I want that to look black, like it's black. Otherwise, it looks like you overpainted and was kind of sloppy. So we're going to cover that up so it doesn't look sloppy. And I'm just doing those um, C strokes again. Just bringing it right up to the bird. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab a little bit of black again. So now the cardinals usually have the little, it's like a little V shape that'll come down from their beak and come onto their cheeks a little bit and then up around their eye and down to their 
beak and then we'll do that same thing on the other side so I'm going to use that little brush to do that I have my little bit of black brush it out and it's okay if you get it on the beak because we're gonna touch that up with the rust But I'm just going in, in the pattern that the black would be going on a cardinal, kind of around the eyes. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. Up to the beak here. Just kind of brushing it, getting it roundish. And then bring it alongside the beak a little bit and then this down to get that little point there. You can see it's just coming around the eye to the beak and then it's down on the cheek a little bit and down to the point. So we're just going to do the same on the side. We're just brushing that around his eye so it looks like a cardinal. And you can take it back a little bit because they do have that little peak kind of back there. And then brush it a little bit alongside the beak. And get this little peak back here a little more. And I'm just brushing over the eye, from the peak over the eye to the beak. And then down on his cheek a little bit, a little bit under that beak, get that black. And just a little bit across the top of the beak because the black kind of meets up. So that's how you do the black on your cardinals. So I grab the little black again, and we'll come over to this one and we'll do the same thing. So that zero brush is good for this little bitty work like this. Because if you had a big brush like this, you would have black everywhere. So I'm just going to work my black in there. Turn him and get this one. Work it around there. Come across there a little bit. Brush it out. I get that little point that's past their eye and bring it up down on their little cheeks. Down underneath beside the beak. And we'll just kind of get a little peek at, at the bottom. A little closer. Courtney's going to see if she can get them. Well, i got to have my hand on the table, otherwise it's not stable. Can you, like, zoom in? Courtney's going to try to zoom in the um, camera so you guys can see a little better. Okay, she says she's got it in there. So I'm just taking the little dry brush and I'm just gradually working the black to get it shaped around the eyes. And a little bit of that point. Across the front of their face. Let's get that little point. And then just coming down on their cheeks a little bit, and then I got a little bit of a point on to their belly. And it's okay if their beak is getting black, that's not going to hurt anything. We're going to cover that up with rust. So I'll get this more of a little pointed end there so it looks like a mask. Looks like they're wearing a mask. That's what I guess I think they look like to me. So now this one is a little thicker, heavier than this one, but that's okay because they're two different birds. So Courtney had me move a little bit, so I'm going to see if that works. So I'll wait because the um, video when I'm watching it, it's quite delayed. It looks like I'm right on the edge and you guys probably can't see. I'll just give it a second here. Oh, 
let's see. Party thinks I'm good, so I'm gonna keep going. I'll hopefully catch up. So I'm just going real, real gentle and soft to get get that black, so it looks like the cardinals. Seems like I need a little more on this fella's eye, and you, you just gradually build that up, and just you just go slow with the little brush. That's all. And I want a little more on this guy. And maybe a little more down, give him more of a peak here, a little bit darker. So that's pretty good. So now I'm gonna, um, I need some rust now. I'm gonna switch brushes to another, I have another um, zero brush. Um, so you'll, you, you will find that you can use more than one brush of the same size, especially when you're doing those little pieces and switching colors. If I use the black, the rust would look very, um, blackish and I don't want that for the beak. So now I just have my O line, um, dry brush again and I just want to get their little beak. I don't want it black. I want it. It's more of a rusty orange color. And if you have orange after you put the rust on you could go back and put some orange on it just a little bit but we tried to cut down on the colors a little bit so we thought we could get by without the orange and just use the rust. So I'm just turning him and getting that rust onto his little beak, his little beak. And we'll do the other one and let that one dry. So grab a little more and brush it out. And if if you only have the the one little brush, you could um, wash out. The one brush that you have and just let it dry and um, come back in an hour or so after your brush is dry and then and then do your little beak so it's not that you can't do it you just will have to do it in steps if you don't have extra brushes so I'm just going to keep building up that rust on on their beak so it's a little bit lighter I'm just going a little at a time And you want to do the bottom and the top, and I just keep going back and forth until I get it light enough that it's, you can tell that there's a little beak there. So they're pretty close. Let's see what we have for messages. So I, I'll bring it up to see if you can see better. There we go. I just want it a little bit lighter yet. So if you did have orange, you could um, dip your brush to, and just do like a little bit of orange over, over the over the top of the beak just to give it a little highlight. But they're they're fine with this. So there, they got little little beaks now. So we need to highlight their little eyes. So I'm gonna grab a little white here. And I'm going to use my little pointy brush. If you don't have a little brush with a pointed handle, you could use, a, um, if you have a ball, little ball stylus, you could use that. Or if you have a round toothpick, you could use that. Or um, you could even use your liner brush with with the tip if you want. I, I just really like this little pointy brush for, for it, and that's what I always use. And I'm just dipping that into the white and getting just a little bit of it on there. And I'm going to do the right side of each eye. Again, you don't want to do the left on one and the right on the other because they'll look cross-sided. Um, I'm going to start with this one so that when I, I'm not putting, if I put start with this side, I'll have my hand in the wet paint. So I'm going to start with this side and then I can move over here. So I'll move that up just a little bit. And I'm holding him and I'm resting my paint hand on him too. So I'm just going to put a little white dot at the very top. And you want just a little one like the size of like that's too much so we don't want that we'll have to fix that up with some black like maybe a little bit bigger than the grain of sugar or salt we'll do this one now and you can see that it doesn't always go perfect every time and there's nothing wrong with that 
I need a little more weight. You just want your dots fairly the same size. Well, there's his little dots, but now we have this little mess over here that we need to clean up. So you want to let, let that dry. And then I'm going to use my liner and get some black on there. And then I'm going to turn him so I can cover some of that up. And hopefully still have a little white dot left. So there, that's really all there is to it. So I still have a nice little white dot. It's a little bit whiter than this one, so I'm going to make that one a little bit whiter. Or you could cover up the whole white dot and just start over. I'll just make this one a little bit bigger to match that one. Looks like it needs a little bit more. And that's a whole lot more, so we'll make this one just a little bit more. Oh, no, I got it on the red, so I don't want that at all. So I'm just going to take my paper towel here and get it out of there. And I think we'll just start over with that one. So we'll let that dry. And I'll take my black and I'm just going to, it's mostly on the eyeball, so I'm just going to cover it up with the black. That's how it goes sometimes. It's not always cut and dry and pretty. You got to go back and redo things. So I'm actually going to cover this one up too because I don't like it. It's too big compared to the other one. So we'll let that dry. Okay, so while that's while that's drying, let's see what we can do. We'll show you. I'll show you how to put the moss on on your little squirrel. So you would want to seal him and I'm not going to seal it because it, it just stinks too much in here and it chokes me. But I used to use a, the matte sealer which was the previous porcelain sealer and I usually, um, he's kind of little so I can't probably can't, can't get a stick up inside him. Let's see if we can get a little one up, up there. So I would probably stick that brush up in there and then I would just go back and forth. So when you're spraying a thin, several thin coats are better than a heavy coat that's going to run. Um, have your sealing can maybe six to eight inches away from your piece. And then just go back and forth. Just like you're doing using a spray can. If you ever use a spray can, go back and forth. And then you just turn him and do the rest of them. And then you wait a minute for him to um, dry. And then he would be dry. So then you have your little um, baggie of Spanish moss. And you could use the hot glue, hot glue gun or the low temperature glue gun. Or you can use this, um, a craft glue or like this E6000 glue. Um, I usually use the hot glue gun. Oh, and this is going to be a bugger. I can't get it open. I don't have a pliers either. Hold on, we'll see if Jason can get it. We have helper tonight. So I'll take my Spanish moss and kind of twirl it because that'll kind of um, just put it more together. So with the E6000, it likes to um, like come right out. So I have my little moss kind of twirled into a little, little row. And I would take my E6000 and just, um, I, I wouldn't start in the front, I'd probably start in the back. And put a little layer of it. Uh, maybe you go about halfway or a third of the way. Start with your moss and just stick it on your glue. And go as far as you have moss. 
And then you can add some more more glue. And just bring it right around to the back. Let me get the cap on there so it doesn't keep squirting out. And then you just want to bring your moss right around. And if you have extra, just grab it and pull it off. And then just kind of overlap it. So that kind of hides, hides that button. So the E6000 is going to take maybe five minutes to dry. And I don't, really don't want it on the bottom because that way we want it to sit sit nice yet. But it's just around him and gives him a little character. And you just push it into the glue. Um, the hot I prefer the hot glue gun for this, but I know everyone doesn't have that. So just like your craft Elmer's glue would work too, or your tacky glue, or the E6000. So that's how you put your moss on. You just stick it into your glue. So your little squirrel is all, all done. And he's looking all cute. So now we, I'm going to switch um, papers here. Moss on everything. And we got to come back and finish our little, um, fix our little birds because they need some eyes. I'm just going to take my little brush because now the black is dry. Dip it in there and see if we can get two white dots that are matching. I'll move it up so you guys can hopefully see it better. A little more. And then, um, there, that's a lot better. They're a little bit brighter than this one, but that's okay too. You, they don't need to be exactly the same. So again, this guy I would take, um, if you can get a brush in there. Otherwise you can hold it and um, spray the top and then let that dry and then hold him here and then spray the bottom. So these guys do the same thing with the moss. So let's get the moss paper back in here. And we'll grab a little more moss. And that's in one of your babies in your box. So I'm just going to um, stretch that a little bit and twirl it to kind of tighten it up so it stays together. I just have a nice little wad of it that'll work around my uh, birds. So, and now i got to be careful so I don't get my white smeared, but I'm going to put my glue on here and just come right around to the front. And then I'll start with my moss. And you can put it however thick or thin amount you want on there. Looks like I got it a little thick right there. And we'll add some more glue and just take it right around to the back. Put the cover on there so it don't squeeze out all over. Just work it right around. Make sure it's off the bottom. But if you if you have a hot glue gun that goes a lot quicker because it it's like sticks right away where this kind of has to dry a little bit. So now you have your little bird's nest. So, let's see here, we'll fold this over. We have our little birds, and we have our little squirrels, so they're looking really cute. So that's two of our pieces tonight. So next week we will do our raccoon since he's in the van and I can't get to him. But this was probably good just to do these two tonight. I can bring them up so you can see them a little better. So there we go with those. Okay, so we'll let those dry. And then I got a couple little show and tell things. Uh, so I had a couple of questions this week on how, how to do the cutouts. Um, say you have a big snowman and you want to cut out like a last name or just welcome. And what you can do is get a stencil. Um, this is just the alphabet stencil. You can get it at your craft shows, Amazon, eBay. Um, and then you want to take a piece of paper. And then you just, um, and I can actually show you on the back side here. Do I have a pen? Pen, I need a pen. Oh, I got a pencil. This will work. 
So I, I will usually draw, um, let's see here, which way are we going to go? We'll go this, so I usually draw my welcomes at an angle, so I'll draw a line as the baseline for the bottom of my, um, so I'm not in screen the way it looks according, which way do I got to go? Here's the doesn't look in screen on there, looks okay. Uh -huh. Maybe it's just the really tablet. Like the tablet looks okay okay so I usually do a, a baseline um, where I lay my stencils so if I wanted um, Brenda or say the Bartzes I would start with the B and I'm just gonna line up the B but I also line up like the the last letter over here so that this is at the right angle and then I will just trace out and this isn't a very good pencil because it's not very sharp but you would just trace out your letters and then so the next letter would be an A so I thank you Courtney so then I want to let a, a little bit of space in between my letters and depending upon the stencil like there's too much um, curly Q on there so I wouldn't actually use all of that but I'm going to let about a quarter of an inch between my letters line up my A on that baseline and again, come over here and line up one of these last two letters on your baseline so that these letters stay at the same angle. And then you just want to trace out your alphabet letter. So there's my A. So we have B. We'll just light darken these up so you guys can see it. We're going to see a flipped image because of the camera. Okay, Cordy says you're going to see a flipped image, but um, when I'm done, I'll flip it around. So I have BA, so now my next letter would be R. Again, I'm going to let about a quarter of an inch between the A and the R. I'm going to line up the bottom of my R on my baseline. Come over here to like about the last letter and line that up on my baseline that I drew. Draw up my R stencil here. And you can use all of the stencil or just a part of it. Like there's extra lines and I, that's too hard to cut out with, with the clay, so I'm, I'm not using all of it. But like I'll bring this back further so it's just one piece. So there's our R. Next one will be T, so again I'll let a little, little quarter inch in there. And you're not always, like, it may be more space between the, the R and the T here, but I kind of want the quarter of the inch up there because that's actually close closer. Because if I put this a quarter inch away from my R, the top of the T is going to be right over the R, and you don't want that. So you want whatever the closest um, part of the letter is, go with your quarter inch there. So now I have my T. And you don't have to use this just for cutting out. You could even um, use this as a stencil to, to paint on, on your bisque piece. So then my next letter would be a Z. So now I'm going to go to the Z. And again, I'm not going to measure the quarter inch from here. I'm going to measure the quarter inch from here so they don't overlap each other. And we have our Z. So I have my letter at the bottom of my baseline. And now I have to put my number on my baseline. And that just gives you a nice equal spacing um, if you do that. Because you don't want one letter real close and one little letter real far away. So there we have Bart's. So if I wanted my apostrophe, that you kind of have to just eyeball where it would go. And then I probably want a little space and I would put an S for Bart's. So you, you want more than a quarter of inch here because there's usually a little more space than that. But again, I'm going to line up my S at the bottom of that line I drew. And then also this last letter that gives all these letters the same angle. Um, so there we go. We have Bartz's. So I'll turn it around so you guys can see it. And I'll actually get rid of the back here. So that's how you can make yourself a stencil and you can um, cut this out on the greenware or you could put it on your bisque and then you could paint it in and you would, um, if you were doing it on bisque, you'd probably have to put a piece of carbon paper behind it and then you could hold it onto your piece of bisque and then the, like if it's a big snowman and then just trace that out with um, a pencil. 
if you're doing it on greenware, I usually, you can use the pen or the pencil, or you can use some ball styluses. And these are handy little things. Um, if you're cleaning greenware to put texture back in, you can get them um, usually as singles or sets of four. They come in um, different sizes from a larger all the way down to the small. So I would take that and say, well, let's say this piece of white is a, is a this snowman. I would lay that on there that's in greenware where I want it. And then I would just take my ball stylus and outline the, the stencil that I just did. And you just go around each letter and then that would be imprinted in, in your greenware. And then you can take the exacto knife, which I thought I had here too. And so then once you, you did all that, that would be imprinted in your greenware, then you could take your exacto knife and then you just cut cut out your stencil. And if your clay is smearing, then your piece is too too wet yet. You need to let it dry just a little bit more, which could be all, maybe an hour or so. And then you can just keep cutting out each of your letters and then your piece will be cut out. And we'll actually do, I'll actually do a video of how to do that, but it was a little show and tell extra for tonight since I didn't have the raccoon to paint. So that's how you would do your stencil. Then another little tip that I have is you can buy this really fine um, glitter. It's like a diamond dust. It's extra fine glitter. It comes in lots of different colors um, at your box stores and your craft stores. But then if you get like a salt shaker and put your glitter in there, that works really nice for once you're sealing your stuff, you can sprinkle with, with the salt shaker. It just works a lot better than these big holes throughout on the glitter. These the little holes work a lot better. So that's just another tip for putting glitter on your things. So I think that's about it for tonight. Um, next week we will have the raccoon. So we'll um, start with the raccoon. You can have him base coated or you can we can base coat it along. If you guys have any questions, any suggestions, just let us know. Otherwise, have a really good week, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. Um, we'll be posting, Cardi says, some videos from the show tomorrow to show you what that's about a little bit. Hopefully, Hopefully she says it works. <laughs> we'll see. We don't know what the reception's going to be. And then if it doesn't, we'll sh um, probably show you some sneak peeks of some of the things that we get and that we're bringing home. And if it doesn't work there, we'll um, show you some sneak peeks over the weekend of some of those supplies that we got to share with you guys to make available to purchase. If so that, wants the box oh, and Courtney says if anyone um, that's not a subscriber and you want the Halloween box, just send us a message and she can send you an invoice. Um, they'll have to be paid by the 4th of September at midnight central time and then they will be shipped out on the morning of the 5th and your boxes will be on their way and should be a lot of fun for next month too. So thank you everyone for joining in. Hope you have a good week and hope you enjoyed your little woodland animals. Thank you and good night.